welcome to the Sportsnomic Podcast, where our capital is sports. Mexican clubs among standouts in the new SoccerX Football Finance 100 Index. Digital sports segment is poised to grow by up to $23 billion. Esports continues to build on record growth for the year. The Spanish Football Federation denied Barca's attempt to congratulate China during Lunar New Year celebration. Johnny Infantino looks set for a new term as FIFA's president. Hello everyone, my name is Augusto Blacker and today we're going to be talking about stories that are making waves locally and globally in the sports industry. The new SoccerX Football Finance 100 Index hit newsstands earlier this week. The publication, which analyzes global football club financial data and builds its top 100 lists based on this information, found that Mexican club Rayados de Monterrey was the highest ranking Latin American team, ending up in the 48th slot. Positioned close behind were fellow Mexican standouts Chivas de Guadalajara and Club América in the 52nd and 59th positions respectively. According to the ranking, professional football clubs from Mexico, Brazil, and Argentina were the most financially successful in the region and placed a total of 19 clubs, such as Porto Alegre's Inter and Sao Paulo's Corinthians, along with Copa Libertadores finalists Boca Junior and River Plate among the top scorers. The global ranking's first spot was awarded to current Premier League champions Manchester City thanks to their form both on and off the field. Finally, the report also found that ownership groups from the United States and from China were the most financially successful, claiming 31% of the teams on the list. The sports industry continues its bullish run, and experts foresee a $23 billion growth in consumer online spending this year alone. According to consulting firm Juniper Research, OTTs that offer sports content will reach the $250 billion threshold this year, which translates into an overall growth of 9%. The global reach of internet giants such as Facebook, Twitter, and Amazon Prime, for example, are the ideal vehicles to drive subscribers and consumers alike for sports teams and leagues looking to grow their digital footprint. It's no coincidence Facebook acquired the exclusive rights to webcast 25 Major League Baseball games this season, Twitter acquired rights to webcast the PGA Tour, and Amazon, in addition to its existing deal with the Premier League, also acquired the rights for the NFL's Thursday Night Football. The esports industry continues to bear the flag as a business model and expects a 26.7% growth this year compared to last. According to consulting giant New Zoo and their global esports market report for 2019, a total of $897.2 million will come from investments made by companies who bet on rights acquisitions, advertisement, and sponsorships. Growth is expected to continue well into the next decade, with investments in the segment expected to surpass. $1.5 billion by 2022. Barcelona Football Club is well aware the Chinese market is where they have to focus their consumer strategy on. The Spanish Football Federation, however, decided against allowing the historic club to wink at the Asian behemoth by declining their petition to have their player's name in Chinese on the back of their jerseys for their Copa del Rey match against Real Madrid. The club had already made the decision to move forward with the initiative as their way of honoring the Lunar New Year celebrations that had just gotten underway in China, and the fact the Asian country is one of its most important consumer markets outside of Spain, but the Federation had other ideas and so Barca were forced to wear their typical jerseys during the match. Don't feel too bad for the Catalan Giants, as news of the initiative reached China and won them over some new fans. The club has also decided to sell these limited edition jerseys in Chinese online. FIFA's current president, Gianni Infantino, is expected to continue as president of global football's governing body as he has no opponent for the institution's next presidential election and is thus positioned to continue leading FIFA for the next four years. The election is scheduled to take place on the 5th of June in Paris, right before the Women's World Cup gets underway in France. Infantino assumed FIFA's presidency in February of 2016 after its ex-president Joseph Blatter was embroiled in a far-reaching corruption scandal. During his first term, 48-year-old Infantino was behind the idea of increasing the number of teams participating in the 2026 World Cup from 32 to 48 national teams. The 2026 World Cup will be co-hosted by Canada, Mexico, and the United States. The initiative might even be attempted as soon as the next World Cup in Qatar 2022. Hope you enjoyed the podcast, and thanks to all of you for tuning in to one more edition of the Sportsnomics Podcast, where our capital is sport.